Number one gives us a table that shows the value of a car in thousands of dollars each year after it was purchased. It asks us to plot the data values and then find a line that fits the data. So you're going to go ahead and just plot these points. So we've got 0, 30, so about here. Then 1 and 22.5, so halfway would be 22, so a little over half. 2 is at 19. 3 is at 16. 4 is at 13.5. And then 5 is at 11.4. And then we're supposed to draw a line in here that represents this data or fits this data. Now this is going to be different um, for you depending on what line you decide fits the data. Um, so I'm going to draw this line and then we're going to write an equation for our line. And again, yours is yours can be different than mine, okay? Because of the fitting line might be might be slightly different. So I'm going to um, look at where mine crosses the um, y-axis here at 26 about. So I'm going to say that my point is actually at 0, 26, and mine went through the 5. So I'm going to use those two points to write the equation of my line. So the 5 that they gave us, and then 0, 26. So I'm going to subtract these to get the slope. And when I subtract these, I get negative 14.6, and then that's in a width of five years. So my slope is going to be negative 14.6 divided by five, which is like negative 2.92. So when you write your equation of your line, so the cost of my car after a certain number of years, it's going to decrease by 2.92 thousand per year with a starting value of 26,000. Okay, so I've got my starting value there at 26, and then that slope is decreasing negative 2.92 each year. So then it asks, what does C of six mean in this situation? So C of six is the value of the car after, um, six years or six years after it was purchased then they ask us to actually find c of six so we can like look here um and look on the graph and see that it's at about eight okay so at six years mine's at about eight so i could say eight thousand we can also plug it in here so i'm going to plug it into my um oops into my equation so negative 2.92 times six plus 26, so negative 2.92 times 6 is negative 17.52, then we'll add 26, and we get 8.48, which means 8,480 is the value. In this situation, what does the solution to this equation, C of t equals 2, tell us? So then this tells us um, the age of, or the cost of the car, the value of the car after a certain age. So this tells us the age that the car will be worth um two thousand dollars because the two represents two thousand right so this if we solve it will get us um the age that the car will be worth two thousand write an equation that would allow us to find the age of the car when we know c of t so this is taking your equation and again you know this number here and this problem here and this problem here are all potentially different depending on what equation you wrote. So we're taking this equation and we're solving it for C of T um, for here. So we want to solve it for C of T. So let me just write it down. Or sorry, we want to solve it for T, not C of T. 
So we want to get T by itself. So I'm going to subtract 26 from both sides. So then we get C of T minus 26 equals negative 2.92 times T. So then we would divide by the negative 2.92 to get T by itself. So then this would just be T because negative 2.92 divided by negative 2.92 is just one. So then our equation is just gonna be T equals, I'm just trying to get some space here. All right, T equals C of T minus 26 all divided by negative 2.2. 9, 2. So then that's the equation for that problem. Then it says to use that equation to estimate when the value of the car will be $500. So remember that um, this T, or sorry, this C of T is in thousands of dollars. So how much is 500 in thousands? That's half of a thousand, right? Because 500 divided by a thousand gives us 0.5. So we would want to plug 0.5 in. So we get 0.5 minus 26 divided by negative 2.92, again, or your equation. So if your equation is different than mine. And so when we do that, we end up with um, 8.73. So this is saying after about almost nine years, then the cost of the, the value of the car will be down to 500. Number two, the distance in kilometers that a car travels at a speed of 80 kilometers per hour for T hours is given by the distance equals 80 times T. If the car has gone 120 kilometers, how long has it been traveling? So now we have 120 equals 80 times the time. So we would just divide by 80 and that would give us 1.5 hours for how long the car has been traveling. Then rewrite the equation. So rewrite D equals 80 T to represent time as a function of distance. So now we wanna solve for D. So we would just, or sorry, solve for T. So we would just divide by 80 and we would get T equals the distance divided by 80. Number three, match the function to its inverse. So remember the inverse, you just do your order of operations backwards. Um, so in this equation, we have Y equals two times X minus three. So the last thing we did was minus three. So the first thing we're gonna do is add three and then we're gonna divide by two. So we're gonna add three, divide by two. So that's number two here. And so if you kind of looked at this off to the side, it would be like this. So we would add three to both sides. So we'd get Y plus three. Then we'd have to divide by two. So you'd end up with Y plus three divided by two when you're following those operations backwards. So then this next one, all we're going to do is divide by three. So we're just going to get Y divided by three, which is down here at number five. Um, part C, we're doing three times X minus two. So that means we're going to have to undo the minus two first by adding two. Then we're going to need to divide by three. So we're going to get Y plus two divided by three, which is number one. This next one, all you're gonna do is add two. So just Y plus two. Next one, all we have to do is subtract two. So we're just gonna get Y minus two. So that's number six, which then leaves number three, but let's take a look here. So we're doing X minus two and then dividing by three. So instead, how do we undo dividing by three? The first thing we're gonna do is multiply by three. So then we've gotten rid of that. 
then we're going to add two. And that's where the three times y plus two comes from. And that's for number three. Number four, functions h and j are inverses of each other. x is negative 10. When x is negative 10, the value of h of 10, the value of h of x is 7. So h of negative 10 equals 7. So if we wrote this as an ordered pair, it'd be the ordered pair of negative 10, 7. So plugging in negative 10 gets us back 7 for our h function. So what's the value of j? Well, if they're inverses, this is reversed. So we put in negative 10, we got back 7. The inverse, if we put in 7, we get back the negative 10. So for j, when we plug in 7, we get back negative 10. So then it's asking us to determine if each point is on the graph of h um, or j or neither. So we can see we already wrote out these ordered pairs, right? So when the input was negative 10, the output was 7. This is the h function. Okay, and if you want to say y, input equaled negative 10, output equaled 7. And then this next one was on j. And you could say because it just reversed the input output. for the inverse. And we know that H and J are inverses of each other because it told us. Number five, crickets make chirping sounds by rubbing their wings together. The number of chirps they make is closely related to the temperature of their environment. When the temperature is 55 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, we can tell the temperature by counting the number of chirps. Count the number of chirps in 14 seconds, then add 40 to get the temperature. Let N be the number of chirps that they make in 14 seconds, and F be the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So what is the temperature when a cricket chirps 52 times? And remember, this we don't really need to know. This is just the time period. So in 14 seconds, we take that number of chirps, and then we add 40. So this is saying that the temperature is 92 degrees Fahrenheit if it's chirping 52 times in 14 seconds. So write an equation that defines F as a function of N. So F, the temperature that we got, equaled the number of chirps plus 40. So how many chirps would we expect to hear in 14 seconds when it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit? So then we put the temperature in for F, and we don't know the number of chirps yet, and then we add 40. So then we just subtract 40, and we get that the number of chirps would be 20. So if we hear 20 chirps in 14 seconds, it's about 60 degrees. Then we want to take and write the equation to be solved for N as a function of um, the temperature. So we had this original equation, and now we want to solve it for the number of chirps. So we just subtract 40 from both sides. So we would take the temperature minus 40, and that would give us the number of chirps. Number six, describe the domain and the range of the function of the graph that this represents. So remember that the domain is our left and our right movement. It's all of our X values. So we're trying to look at what X values are present okay, in this graph. And we see X values all the way from negative 5 up until 10 when we look at it left to right. And then it's connected, right? So our domain, it's continuous. So it's going to be all numbers, not just whole numbers but all numbers um, from negative five to 10, except a couple, okay? There's a couple that are missing because they have these open holes. So there's a couple spots here where the number is not a part of it. And so we need to remove these from it. So this is at negative three isn't part of it and at six. 
So except negative three and six, but every other number is part of the domain. Then the range is the Y value. So that's looking at it top to bottom. So you're looking at, here's the low end of my graph up to the high end, and you're naming those Y values. And so our range here is from negative two all the way up to four. And this one, it doesn't matter that there's the open circle because this says that there's no output here at negative two, but there is negative two here. So negative two is being part is part of the graph on this whole chunk, even though it's not on this. And same up here. Even though this doesn't have an output of four, this whole chunk has an output of four. So four would be four and negative two are both represented in our range. So all numbers negative two to four. Number seven, the parking rate for a car in a garage is a function of T, the hours it is parked. Find R of one. So if the hours are one, it's in this um, chunk here. So then this would be free. If it's four and a half hours, it's between four and five hours. That's six dollars. If it's eight hours, it's more than seven hours. So then that's going to be $8. Number eight here are the rules that define function f. Draw the graph. So f is equal to 2 between negative 5 and 1 for the x. So between x equals negative 5. So at x equals negative 5, the graph is 2. At all the numbers up until x equals 1, it's also 2. So every number in between here, it's also at 2. So we can just draw a straight line that connects that. Then um, the graph is at x when x is greater than 1 and less than 5. So we think about plotting the 1 still. Okay, so x is 1, the output is 1. x is 2, the output is 2. x is 3, the output is 3, and so on. 4, 4, um, all the way up to 5, right? So then, but now it's not equal at these ends. So at 1, it's, it's almost 1. It's not going to be 1, so we put an open circle because 1 is not part of the domain. Then at 5... Okay, if it was part of the domain, it would be at five, but it's not. So we'll put an open circle. But now all the numbers between here are. So at two, it's two. At three, it's three. At four, it's four. At 4.5, it's 4.5. At 4.9, it's 4.9. At 1.1, it's 1.1. 1.9, it's 1.9. So all of the numbers between here are part of the domain. Okay, so then just open circles on either end since there isn't a line under these inequalities. Then the graph is 7 when x is equal to 5. So at x equals 5, it is 7, so that's a closed circle. And it's 7 all the way until x equals 7. So it's 7 between, like at 5.2, it's 7. At 6, it's 7. At 6 and a half, it's 7. So every number between 5 and 7, the output is 7.